Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for November 9th, 2022. In Copenhagen, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark attended a reception in connection with the publication of the final two volumes of the sixth edition of Trap Denmark, held at the University of Copenhagen. According to a press release, the sixth edition of Trap Denmark is a, quote, comprehensive universe of living stories, interdisciplinary descriptions, and lexical information about Denmark. Here, you will find the most important knowledge about Danish geology, geography, biology, archaeology, history, culture, art, and architecture, as well as social and business life." This morning, the organizers of Crown Prince Frederick's initiative, The Royal Run, announced the date and cities where the upcoming event will take place. The 2023 Royal Run will take place on May 29, 2023, in the cities of Herning, Copenhagen, and Nyborg, to name a few. The Royal Run is a family-friendly event organized by the sports vision Move for Life in collaboration between the Danish Sports Confederation, the DGI, and the Danish Athletics Association. The Danish television network TV2 is a media partner of the Royal Run. The purpose of the Royal Run is to encourage as many people as possible to participate in the, quote, sports community at their own pace and with their own individual goal, end quote. Regardless of one's age and or fitness level, anyone can participate in the Royal Run. Children, young people, adults, the elderly, those in wheelchairs, and mothers with their prams can also participate. You can either choose to walk or run the distances of 1 mile, 5 km, or 10 km, or participate in the popular family mile. The end time is not paramount. Moreover, the event is open to not only Danes, but also foreigners living in Denmark and tourists. So if you happen to be visiting Denmark during the time of the Royal Run, you can actually sign up and, well, participate. So if you're interested in learning more about the 2023 Royal Run and how to sign up, in the description box below, I will leave a direct link to the official website for the Royal Run. Meanwhile, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mary of Denmark arrived in Zanzibar this morning for a two-day meeting of the High Level Commission International Conference on Population and Development, the ICPD Plus 25 High Level Commission Meeting. The ICPD Plus 25 works to promote reproductive health and human rights, as well as women's and girls' rights. In the afternoon, the Crown Princess visited the Kimbe District Hospital and Reproductive Health Clinic. In her social media post, the Crown Princess said, quote, What particularly impressed me was the clinic's ambition, professionalism, and commitment to achieve zero maternity mortality, to avoid maternal mortality, despite the difficult conditions. This is one of the many important global goals, especially because there is knowledge of what can be done to prevent deaths and avoid the human cost of losing a mother. I experienced a dedicated staff with positive results. I had the great pleasure of greeting two mothers and their newborn babies who came into this world this morning." In Paris, His Royal Highness Prince Joachim of Denmark confirmed to a Danish journalist that he and his family will be moving out of France after his contract with the Danish embassy expires next summer. The second son of Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark and the late Prince Heinrich of Denmark is a Danish Army Brigadier General and a defense attaché at the Danish Embassy in Paris. When asked if he and his family will return to Denmark, the prince replied, quote, We will see. End quote. Last week, Prince Joachim was in Toulouse, France, participating in a space defense industry event when another Danish journalist asked him about his plans after his contract ended. What are you going to do? What are your plans? asked the reporter. Quote, Everyone asks that. And yes, I know what I want. And the right bodies, authorities, and people also know what I want. I'm just going to be waiting for the phone to ring. And they say, go. Will it be within the military? Prince Joachim replies, Yes, I would hope so. 
And at this time, I don't want to elaborate any further. End quote. Yesterday afternoon, in Copenhagen, Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark, as patron, attended the Guild Show 2022 held at Christian VII's Slot. The Guild Show displays a distinguished selection of Danish clothing crafts and jewelry art by various craftsmen in the fashion industry. Last evening in Copenhagen, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, as patron of the Ebbe Munch Memorial Fund, presided over the presentation of the 2022 Ebbe Munch Honorary Award Ceremony, held at Christiansborg Slot. Established in 1975, the award was created in remembrance and in honor of the freedom fighter and journalist Mr. Ebbe Munch, who fought in World War II and served as an ambassador to Denmark and was a part of the Danish Royal Court. The Ebbe Munch Award is presented to an individual who works within or has earned merit in areas that the late Ebbe Munch had a special interest. The winner of the Ebbe Munch Honorary Award went to the journalist Ms. Matilde Kimmer, who has devoted her, quote, journalistic life to informing the public about what is going on in the Slavic and, in particular, Russian and Ukrainian world and how it affects global conditions, end quote. In Oslo, their Royal Highnesses Crown Prince Håkon and Crown Princess Mettematik the Norway attended the 75th anniversary celebrations of the Norwegian Church Aid held at the Oslo Domkirke. According to a press release, the Norwegian Church Aid is a, quote, ecumenical organization for global justice. The organization provides emergency assistance in disasters, works for long-term development in local communities, and addresses the root causes of poverty. We advocate for just decisions by public authorities and business and religious leaders. The Norwegian Church Aid works to help the poorest and those in need regardless of their creed, race, political, or religious affiliation, end quote. In Hillington, Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, as patron of the Maternal Mental Health Alliance, visited the Colham Manor Children's Centre with representatives from the Maternal Mental Health Alliance. The Maternal Mental Health Alliance is a charity and a network of 120 organizations dedicated to ensuring all women, babies, and families in the United Kingdom affected by perinatal mental health problems have access to high-quality support and compassionate care. In southern Italy, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco, accompanied by a Monegas delegation, visited the village of Giraci. Upon his arrival at the entrance to the village, the Sovereign Prince was warmly welcomed by the first Deputy Mayor, Mr. Rudy Lizzi. After a few handshakes and warm greetings, the Sovereign Prince unveiled a Grimaldi historical sites of Monaco sign. Thereafter, the Sovereign Prince arrived at the town hall, where he met with several government officials and unveiled yet another plaque commemorating his visit. Twenty minutes later, the Sovereign Prince visited the Greco-Byzantine crypt of the Cathedral of Jirachi, the Church of St. Francis of Assisi, and the Diocesan Museum. At 11 a.m., Prince Albert II and his delegation visited the cute little village of Canolo Nuova, Whilst there, he met with the mayor, Mr. Francesco La Rosa, and a bunch of other local officials. After a delicious Italian lunch with tons of bread, cheese, and wine, and salad, and pasta, the Sovereign Prince said, well, thank you, and goodbye, and headed out for the town of Cittanova. Upon his arrival, and I'm pretty sure you know what's about to happen at this point, he was warmly welcomed by the mayor of Cittanova, Mr. Francesco Cosentino. After unveiling, you guessed it, the Grimaldi Historical Sites of Monaco, plaque number 9,555 at the entrance to the village of Cittanova, the Sovereign Prince arrived at the city hall to unveil another plaque to commemorate his visit. In the late afternoon, Prince Albert II and his delegation were given a tour of the cute little village and visited the church of Madre di Cittanova. The church was built in 1785 in memory of Maria Antonia Grimaldi Sierra, the daughter of Princess Maria Teresa Grimaldi of Girace, who passed away during the earthquake of 1783. Thereafter, Prince Albert II visited the old Grimaldi Palace and Park. 
The day ended with a gala dinner hosted by the Sovereign Prince for the mayors of Jirachi and Chintanova, as well as for the regional and local authorities to thank them for the extremely warm and friendly welcome to the region. Thereafter, the Sovereign Prince unveiled another plaque. No, I'm just kidding. In Amsterdam, Their Majesties King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands welcomed the President of the Republic of Italy, Mr. Sergio Mattarella, and his daughter, Miss Lara Mattarella, to the Netherlands during a ceremony on the Dam Square. President Mattarella is on a three-day state visit to the Netherlands at the invitation of His Majesty the King. After the national anthems were played and the inspection of the Guards of Honor, Their Majesties and the President held a private meeting. In the evening, Their Majesties hosted a gala state dinner at the Royal Palace in Amsterdam in honor of President Mattarella's visit. In Belval, Their Royal Highnesses Grand Duke Henri and Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg viewed the interactive exhibition entitled In Transfer, A New Condition, held at the old industrial building, Molarai. According to a press release, In Transfer, A New Condition presents the work of, quote, 18 artists operating in the space where art and technology and society intersect, artists who are always in the places where transformation is happening. In the exhibition, visitors will meet a new generation of artists who, as citizens of the world, wish to contribute new perspectives that can help us make far-sighted decisions, end quote. The exhibition is a third of the four of ESH 2022's exhibitions at the Molarai, organized in collaboration with internationally renowned museums and the ARS, Arts, Technology, and Society Electronica Festival. In Transfer, a New Condition will be open to the public until November 27, 2022. In Tokyo, her Imperial Highness, Princess Kako Abakishino, viewed the exhibition entitled A Thousand-Year Story of Lacquer and Gold, held at the Misui Memorial Museum. The exhibition showcases lacquerware decorated using a traditional metal sprinkling technique. And finally, yesterday afternoon, in Amman, His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II of Jordan, participated in a meeting with various deans of student affairs from private universities at Al Husseinia Palace. The Crown Prince stressed the importance of bolstering the role of deanships of student affairs at the kingdom's universities in order to help provide an empowering environment for students to engage in political and partisan life. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday, November 10th with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and, well, subscribe. <laughs> okay, take care, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.